Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. The sun's come out, the sheep are all finished with their lambing. We've got six lambs, two boys, four girls, good ratio. Still got one that's not feeding very well, but uh, hopefully he'll be okay. Can't say I'm fully concentrated at the moment on painting due to the arrival of these six babies into the world, but I'm going to have a go today at painting some daffodils. So let's get started. I did a video just recently showing you how to draw daffodils and another one of painting them as well. So I'm not going to go into any details here about how to actually do the drawings. Um, you can refer to that video. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but today I'm just going to um, show you how I put together a bouquet again and to go over the techniques that I'm using. And I started off with quinacridone gold for the centers of the daffodils, for the trumpets. And then I'm painting the petals, the first layer of the petals in, you could use either cadmium yellow or transparent yellow or lemon yellow, depending on how you felt about your daffodils, you could choose the yellow that you prefer or the one that you happen to have to hand. And I'm just roughly painting the petals. I don't tend to go for a great deal of detail. So if you like the loose style of painting, um, I'm the person for you because that's what I do. Um, so I'm just now going in and emphasizing the centers again with a bit more quinacridone gold. I'm using um, a semi-opaque quinacridone gold here, which is not what I normally use. In the description below, you'll see a link to Winsor & Newton quinacridone gold. Um, and this one though is by a company called Nova, I think, which I got online when I was unable to get hold of the, um, the good stuff. It has a certain amount of virtue because it, um, it doesn't spread quite so rapidly, but it's not at all the same experience. It's a, a different thing altogether. And when I bought this, I realized just how much um, difference the manufacturing of the paint makes to the way it works. It's not the same, uh, it might be called the same thing, but it doesn't necessarily have the same um, properties for blending and for mixing and so on and so forth. So that was a, a lesson to me. Um, and I'm now just putting in some water around the, um, the flowers themselves um, in preparation for painting the stems. And I'm going to um, come in with some um, yellow and some sap green in a moment once I've wetted this area, which I'm just doing roughly. I'm not going up to the petals themselves. I don't want them to run all over the place. So, okay, so this is the indication of the sky here and that would be cobalt blue. And I'm just dropping in a little bit of cobalt blue up there and spreading it out roughly. I'm sorry that some of the picture is cut off. I uh, wasn't quite um, awake, I don't think, <coughs> when I set up the camera to do this painting, so I'm sorry about that, but I think you can see most of what I'm doing. And now, um, in the other painting I did of the daffodils, I started off by painting the stems in yellow, which is another technique. Um, this time I thought I would do the more traditional thing and um, start off with them in green. I think both techniques have um, benefits. If you do the yellow first, then you have to add the green on top and uh, that gives a very loose effect. If you start with the green, then you're going to probably add shadows with violets and things like that as you go along. So uh, yeah, I like um, both methods. And now I'm just indicating some of the leaves. Daffodil leaves are long and thin and they come from the base of the stems of the flowers, not from part way up. Keeping it loose, using plenty of water, but not over soaking the paper. This is not really what you would call a wet in wet, although it has elements of wet in wet, um, where I might drop another color into the uh, paint that I've already put on the paper but that's not strictly speaking wet in wet painting. Wet in wet is when you're working on a completely wet piece of paper that you've, you've pre-wet in advance before you start. 
and I do do that but that's not what this is this is just loose watercolor and while I'm painting these I do like to always remember the tip that was given to me years ago by a well-known painter um, to vary the color that you're using every time you re refill the brush change the paint color that you're using add a little bit of yellow add a little bit of blue make it a bit darker make it a bit lighter add a bit of water something anything just don't keep on painting the background in one color vary every stroke and also make sure that you're not holding the brush too close to the um, to the ferrule the silver bit that's called the ferrule um, make sure you're holding the brush at least halfway along so that you get a certain amount of freedom um, with your painting strokes. I mean it's fair enough if you want to do some very fine detail to come in close to the to the brush the brush the brush head um, but uh, for loose painting you probably want to keep your hand at least halfway along. And that's the rosa it wasn't Nova, it was Rosa. That's the Rosa Quinacridone Gold there. It was a bit cheaper than um, the salt I normally have and I'm not sure I would really recommend it, but I'll, I'll use it in certain uh, paintings. I was quite pleased with that little bit of extra um, cobalt blue that I put in there around that bud. I love the colour cobalt blue against that um, orangey yellow colour is just absolutely adorable. And now I've let the petals dry a little bit and now I'm coming in with some more yellows to do the second layer of the petals there. The way I think I did it, I think I had cadmium yellow first and then this is um, lemon yellow or transparent yellow on top. Um, which is one way of doing it, don't have to do it that way around but uh, just vary the yellows give it some life. That particular daffodil seemed to have lost its trumpet so I just um, dropped in a semicircle so it's as if we're looking face on at that one down there at the bottom. This one on the left here is very uh, sketchy but I rather like that as it gets towards the edge of the paper I think it's nice sometimes to let the um, painting become even more um, loose, even looser. And I'm just putting in some darker hints here of um, darker green on the stems, all of which will blend in and um, run into the under painting. And doing a bit of negative um, painting here, painting the shapes between the petals rather than the petals themselves, um, just to make them stand out a little bit better. Being a little bit careful because the, uh, the, the petals obviously aren't quite dry. Now I stopped at that point and I let the painting dry, so I've come back in now um, with some more finishing touches. Once it's dry you can see where you need to um, emphasize and build up layers if necessary because obviously in the drying process being watercolor it does fade back uh, quite a lot so when you come back to your painting after you've left it for a couple of hours it will look different and just want to say here that I, I use a, ha a hairdryer sometimes to dry paintings usually if there are paintings that I'm not planning on um, selling or even tutoring uh, with if I'm just doing something which is a bit of a play or a warm-up I might use the hairdryer on it but if possible if I have time I try to organize myself so that um, between the first and second stages I can actually let the painting dry naturally and there's a reason for this because you might not believe this but the paint the pigment that you put on the paper with all the water that's there when you go away and leave it, it does carry on moving. It's not visible to the naked eye. You can't see what's happening, but the paint continues to move. And in actual fact, it will continue to move probably for a few days, even longer. 
And so the painting will end up different, much different from what you actually do, um, especially if you leave it to dry naturally. If you apply heat in the form of a hairdryer, then that process is cut short. And so some of the beautiful effects that I managed to get in my paintings wouldn't happen. They're just the water and the pigment acting together on the paper, given their time to do their thing. So if you dry them off with a hairdryer, you lose that uh, serendipity there. So just, uh, you know, obviously if you're in a hurry for some reason, you might have to do that. But uh, I, don't, I don't think I realized that for a long time. I used to do my paintings and let them dry and come back to them and think, oh, I didn't realize I'd left it like that. And then eventually I realized that I hadn't, that it had been busily making itself into a slightly different painting while I was asleep, which is cool, isn't it, really? And this is the point at which you start to say, okay, I, I need to be careful here because if I start fiddling like this, that's, that's what I call fiddling. That's fiddling, isn't it? So, you know, what's the motto of the loose painter? Do not fiddle. Fiddling is banned. Now, I didn't do this here, but what I should have done at this point, and I heartily recommend it to all of you, is to um, take your pa paper, take your painting, and put it up, stand it up on the wall, lean it up against the wall, and have a look at it from a distance. And then sometimes you'll see something that you feel is uncomfortably wrong, or um, you might realize that that's all you really wanted to do to it. You're not gonna paint anything else. Stand back and look at your work as often as possible. And in fact, I know not everyone can do this, and I don't always, but if I'm doing a painting any bigger than about eight by 10, I quite often find myself standing up to do it. I'm not the kind of watercolorist that paints at an easel, although they certainly exist, but um, I do quite like to stand up sometimes for the bigger work. And I do sometimes use the easel. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using some Windsor um, Violet to put in a few shadows in the center of this bouquet, just to make the, um, the daffodils pop out a little bit and just a few strokes of emphasis in the um, indication of leaves down below. And then, very shortly, any minute now, I'm going to um, call it a day because, you know, what my maxim is, don't fiddle. The danger of going down to a smaller brush, you start to think, oh, I've got a small brush in my hand, I can, I can just do this or I can just do that. But on the other hand, you do want the petals to have form. You do want them to have shape. So you have to be very careful going step by step at this stage. You'll notice that the beginnings of my paintings are very loose and random, but the further I get on into them, the more I slow down and, uh, and take my time deciding what to do where. So I'll just take a moment now to remind you not to forget about our website at dianeanton.com where you can go to download the sketches for many of my videos, including a, a bouquet of daffodils. And also, if you are thinking of buying anything, if you can use the affiliate links in the description below each video to click through to Amazon, that would be very helpful. So thank you in advance for that. Also, don't forget to um, subscribe if you haven't already so that you make sure you get a notification. If you click the bell, you'll get notified every time a new video comes up. So I'm going to put this painting away now and let it dry, let it do its thing, let it do the final work overnight. So here's the final painting now that it's dry. I've got this one for sale on eBay as a print. If anyone's interested, head on over there. They're only $9.95 and we ship worldwide. So thanks for being here everybody again and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy painting and bye bye for now. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.